operations before the end of the year. This period is generally referred to as the rush hour. This period usually witnesses high vehicular movement within and outside the state, as most often road accidents are recorded. The Federal Road Safety Corps, who is saddled with the responsibility of ensuring safety on the nation's roads, has made it a yearly routine during the ember months to carry out sensitization around motor parks and highways to enlighten drivers on the need to obey traffic rules and regulations so as to avoid accidents. Though the campaigns embarked upon by the Corps have yielded some positive results, road crashes still persist during this period. What new strategy is the FRSC adopting to further consolidate on the, and to curtail road crashes? What should be the responsibility of road users during and after the period? This is the focus of our discussion on Panorama, coming to you live from the studio of NTA Network Center, Makudi. I am Susan Omale. First, the news of the day. Vice President Kashim Shatima has led other Nigerian officials to sign a memorandum of understanding between Nigeria and Telecom Grant Ericsson on a 5G innovation lab. The MOU signed at Ericsson's Global Headquarters and Research Development Lab in Christian, north of Stockholm, Sweden, was witnessed by Vice President Shatima and Ericsson's Senior Vice President and Head of Business Area, Middle East and Africa. State House correspondent Abdul Rahman Jibrila reports. The deal is aimed at placing Nigeria among world's top users of the 5G network in terms of productivity and boosting Nigeria's technological capabilities. Minister of Communications and Digital Economy signed the MOU on behalf of the Nigerian government, while Peter Olusoji Ogundele, country manager Ericsson, Nigeria, signed on behalf of the telecom giant. 5G is the fifth generation of cellular networks said to be 100 times faster than 4G, thereby creating unprecedented opportunities for people, businesses and technology across the world. For the reforms that is going on in the country and our ambition to raise the level of productivity and make our economy more competitive, it is important that we use the strength of the VP and this visit to truly deepen the relationship. And that's what the VP has done with all the meetings that he's had. So the MOU, MOU in particular is very focused on ensuring that Nigeria can make the most of 5G technologies. Vice President Kashim Shatima briefed on the company's technological evolution, radio spectrum matters, standardization, as well as cyber and network security inquired about the possibility of deploying 5G technology to help Nigeria improve security of oil facilities, prevent oil theft and pipeline vandalization. Meanwhile, Vice President Kashim Shatima has met with the Swedish Prime Minister in Stockholm. The high-level talks focused on strengthening bilateral relations with discussions covering trade expansion, strategic partnerships, regional security cooperation, deepened collaborations and proactive interventions. Earlier in Sweden, Vice President Kashim Shatima also toured automobile giant Scania's headquarters in Sweden, describing it as a strategic engagement to discuss Nigeria's market potentials and explore deeper collaboration opportunities. Exploring biofuel solutions for Nigeria's transport sector Vice President Kashim Shatima stressed that all options must be on the table to address Nigeria's transportation challenges. Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. Nigerian Head of State General Yakubu Gowon is 90. At a public lecture to set the tone for the series of events to mark this birthday, speakers emphasized the need to build a global Nigeria that the likes of General Yakubu Gowon envisioned. Kelvin Ebonia reports. Reputed for being among those who laid the foundation for a new Nigeria. At 90, the former head of state, no doubt, speakers doted, would have loved to see a greater, 
secured and self-sufficient Nigeria at this time of his life. But like the guest lecturer, Dr. Akimumi Adesino, president of the Africa Development Bank Group said, now is the time for the country's leaders to begin to rebuild the country to take its place in the global space, a country that put education as priority because without a formidable human capital, Nigeria will not attain its potential to lead Africa into prosperity. A reason, the AFDB is investing $100 million to establish a youth entrepreneurship investment bank in Nigeria. As head of state, General Gawan's National Development Plan was a masterpiece. Nigeria instituted an industrial policy to support automobile assembly plants. How proud we were to ride made in Nigeria Pojos and Volkswagen. From President Bola Tinubu, represented by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, George Akume, to former President Ulushe Gwambasanjo, the unifying personality of General Yakub Gawan is a testament that a united and progressive Nigeria is possible. Our president has tremendous respect for your person and for your services to our dear uh, country. You are worthy to be nationally celebrated while you are still alive. We owe him immense gratitude for the perseverance and tenacity in keeping this country in one piece and at peace with itself. Other former Nigerian leaders sent in goodwill messages to elogize the celebrant, who himself, in his usual way, called for a sense of nationhood among Nigerians. Thank you all uh, for celebrating my 90th birthday. Now, may I also wish, wish each and every one of you your happy birthday and future 90th birthday. <laughs> Kelvin Ewonwaye. And Ahmed Tinubu has commended the former head of state, General Yakubu Gowon, whom he says can be rightly called the father of national infrastructure for his significant contributions to nation building and development. In a statement he personally issued to celebrate the general at 90, President Tinubu says, the celebrant's telling example remains a beacon of hope and aspiration for those in government, encouraging them to do their best for the country. Acknowledging the former head of state as a gentleman extraordinaire, one of the longest serving Nigerian leaders, the president describes him as a brilliant officer trained at Sandhurst and reluctantly became Nigeria's leader at 32 and whose life story has inspired many Nigerians. He describes the economic con community of West African states, ECOWAS, founded in 1975 as General Gowon's most credible legacy. President Timunubu says, he be since he became the nation's leader, General Gowon has been his counselor, offering advice when needed. He recalls his role when the ECOWAS had a misunderstanding with some of the Sahelian states calling for moderation from all sides of the stake for the sake of ECOWAS unity. The president says General Yakubu Gowon has continued to deploy his Nigeria Praise program in prayer and intercession for the country, while also suing for religious tolerance, peace, harmony, and stability in the land, which he points at as a further testament to his belief in the unity and togetherness of Nigeria. President Tinubu prays that God Almighty will endure General Gowon with more years to continue to be useful to Nigeria and humanity. Panorama continues after this break. Do stay with us. You're still watching Panorama. Local government elections are currently underway in Kogi State, with eligible voters expected to cast their ballots to elect council chairmen and councillors across the 21 local government areas of the state. Meanwhile, the Kogi State government has imposed a ban on vehicular movement from 7 a.m. 
to 4 p.m. today to ensure a smooth electoral process and enhance voter security. Kinsley Femi, Fanwa State Commissioner for Information and Communications, emphasized that security agencies have been instructed to strictly enforce the restriction with penalties for violators. Residents are urged to participate in the election with the assurance that adequate security measures are in place at polling stations. Process, as you can see, very peaceful, no rancor, and I want to sincerely appreciate the Kogi State Independent Electoral Commission for due, I mean, for carrying out their due diligence. Because, as you can see here, it's properly managed. Security everywhere, people are orderly, and more importantly, Kogi State Government for creating a nibbly environment for all the contestants. opened across all 21 local government councils of the state marks a crucial step in shaping the future of governance and development at the grassroots. As citizens exercise their right to vote, they are the future of their communities and the state as a whole. Non-adherence to traffic rules and regulations has been identified as a major contributing factor to road traffic crashes. This has remained over the years despite efforts by relevant authorities to curb the menace. These and more formed the topic of discussion at the stakeholders' town hall meeting organized by the Federal Road Safety Corps, Benue State Command. Blessing Omeche Ebute has details. Available statistics has it that approximately 1.19 million people die each year as a result of road traffic crashes. In Nigeria, more road traffic crashes are recorded during the ember months as there is an increase in vehicular movement during this period. To enlighten transport operators and travelers, the Federal Road Safety Corps carried out motor park sensitization as part of the ember month campaigns. Shifting focus from the motor park rallies to community-based initiative, the Federal Road Safety Corps has introduced the stakeholders' town hall meeting designed to create awareness, share ideas, and operational strategies to mitigate the projected traffic challenges faced. This is a new initiative of the Comasha. For over 35 years, this is what we are doing all the time. So the Comasha felt that it's not only the commercial drivers who are supposed to sensitize, we're supposed to sensitize the general public. About the, about the private uh, drivers, uh, those who are not uh, commercial driving, they too they need to be sensitized. Key stakeholders applauded the introduction of the town hall engagement as it will provide them the enabling environment for effective operations. We ensured too that all our vehicles are with speed limiters. Our vehicles don't do more than 100 kilometers per hour except and on emergency cases. So we we'll partner with them, we we'll understand with them, so that we we'll have that free flow. And we really appreciate people should be mindful of this time. Commissioner for Transport and Power, Omale Omale, who represented the governor, commended the FRSC for their efforts in reducing road traffic crashes and maintaining sanity on the highways. We are all committed to creating an enabling environment as a government for effective stakeholder engagement. We have taken deliberate steps targeted at giving effect to that part, particularly in the area of road safety, initiative, and infrastructural development. The meeting edition of the Stakeholders Town Hall meeting is with the theme, Stakeholders Engagement, a Critical Component for Safer Lives. In Makudi, Blessing Omecha Ebute, NTA News. To further discuss on the Ember Month campaign, I have with me in the studio the Sector Commander, FRC Benue State Command, in person of Corps Commander Stephen Oluwole Ayodele. It's good to have you in the studio, sir. Thank you. Thank good, you very much for coming. Good afternoon, my, uh, my viewers. Okay, now let's go ahead. We are talking about the Ember Month campaign, and it has been carried out by your organization every year. Now, what has this done to the people? Has it really changed them? Thank you. Um, it has actually changed. Uh, 
you know, <coughs> Ember month from the month of uh, September to December is a period where we have uh, high vehicular movement on the on the road. So, and that is why in FRSC we decide to uh, carry out a sensation among road users because this is a period where we have a high vehicular on the on, uh, movement on the road. And like I said, this has made a lot of impact on uh, on the on the road and on the users because uh, we have uh, recorded. Uh, uh, re uh, we have recorded a reduction in, in uh, road traffic crashes uh, in, uh, in, th in this period. And also, the number of uh, offenders has also reduced because of the uh, sensation we carry out during this period as well. So this okay. has actually worked. However, we, it's, a continuous, it's, a, it's a continuous exercise. Now, it's really good to know that it has actually worked. Now, let's talk about the major causes of road crashes. What are the major causes? Uh, largely, is non-adherence to traffic rules and regulation. That's number one. Mm -hmm. If you know, like uh, we are told that uh, causes of road traffic crash is categorized into three: uh, human factor, uh, environmental factor, and uh, vehicular ve uh, ve uh, factors of the ve vehicles. Actually. 80% of these crashes are caused by human beings, which is the driver. 80%. 80%. So, in other words, if the human factor is taken care of, the other 20% is just uh, mm -hmm. insignificant. And that is why we concentrate more on the sensitization of the drivers and passengers as well. Okay, and these passengers and drivers we are talking about, is it only those in Makudi, the urban areas, or does it go to the, the rural areas? Rural areas. You know, like the sensitization we just did last uh, Thursday in Benue, is going to be cascaded in all the nose and cranny of Benue State. So it's not, it's not just in the uh, urban area alone. It's every, every part of the state. Okay, and mm. uh, is there any plan to sustain this? You know, most of the time we wait till the Ember period and then we bring up our campaign. In is it not possible for it to go throughout the year? Yes, in fact, like the town hall meeting is going to be done on a quarterly basis henceforth. It's going to be done on a quarterly basis. And it is not just the town hall meeting alone. There are other sensitization that we do, routine sensitization. For example, before the patrol team will, will embark on their normal patrol, they go to motor parks to sensitize the drivers and passengers. Because we discovered that uh, it is not just the drivers that cause accidents. Passengers at times also can distract the driver, thereby causing an uh, accident yes. on the road. So we, we, we go to the motor park, talk to the drivers before they uh, uh, because before they take off in the morning, we also talk to the uh, the passengers as well. Okay. Mm, so this no. is going to be a continuous exercise. Okay. What's your collaboration with other agencies, or is it only a road safety affair? No. Mm -hmm. In fact, collaboration with other agency has been so cordial. You know, we collaborate with uh, Nigerian police, uh, Nigerian, civil, uh, Nigerian security, civil and uh, civil defence, uh, Nigerian army. DSS, NDLA, and other security agencies. For example, we partner with NDLA to carry out a campaign on uh, drunk driving. Mm -hmm. So we sometimes we go to the motor park with them to also talk to the drivers, to let them know the danger in uh, driving under the influence of uh, alcohol and drugs. So it has been it has been very cordial. All right, thank you very much for coming to give us your thoughts you. on road issues. Well, we've been talking with the sector commander, Federal Road Safety Command, Benue State, Corps Commander Stephen Oluwole Ayodele. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. Panorama. Thank you. Moving ahead, the federal government is intensifying border surveillance to prevent importation of Magbo mm -hmm. virus, a health threat outbreak in Rwanda. Director General of the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, NCDC, Dr. Jide Idris, who confirmed a surge in a number of cholera cases at a, new, at a news conference in Abuja, also gave an update on the national efforts to tame all emerging diseases threatening public health. Olusheye Adiabo has more.
Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention, NCDC, cholera epidemiological summary updates indicates cases have surged to 14,237 with 378 fatalities recorded in 2024. The center emphasized that floodings in Brno, Adamawa, Jigawa, Yobe, and Kano State has exacerbated the situation, making them the epic center. The number of suspected cholera cases and deaths in 2004 has more than doubled when compared to this time last year. And that is where we are extremely worried. These numbers reflect the severity of the outbreak and reinforce the need for continuous vigilance and action. It also underscores the developmental issues that should be addressed both at the national and subnational levels. Then came the strategies deployed to counter the outbreaks, principally the close monitoring of MacBook virus outbreak in Rwanda. Working with our stakeholders across ministries, departments, and agencies of government, we have activated health, health declaration forms again at the ports for incoming passengers, especially from affected regions. The NCDC says it's strengthening collaboration with relevant actors in the One Health approach as it intensifies awareness to drive citizens' participation in the control efforts, especially in taking responsibility of their own health. In Abuja, Olushaye, Adiago, and Tienin. And talking sports, Nigeria's Flamingo set to take on Ecuador in their second under-17 Women's World Cup game tonight. Let's join Peter Oibo for sports update. Ahead of their second Group A games against debutants Ecuador in the ongoing 2024 FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup on Saturday, Flamingo's head coach, Bankole Wolokere, is confident his girls will have another great day in the office when they confront Ecuador. According to the coach, the girls will take it one match at a time, with the aim to advance to the next stage. The Flamingos defeated New Zealand 4-1 in their first game on Wednesday to move top of Group A with three points. Meanwhile, let's tell you that Nigerian's Victor Osime has confirmed that his move to Gasatara was his choice, despite considering staying at Napoli. Osime made the revelation while speaking with Turkish media ahead of the team's weekend game. The Nigerian striker who has scored two goals for the club so far will miss the club's Saturday game due to injury. Staying on football, president of the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, Ibrahim Goso, has commended the zeal of the management of the Nationwide League One for ensuring continuous play in the NLO. Goso stated these at the finals of the 2024 NLO Africa Scout Cup final in Buari, Abuja, when FC Basari from Nasara State defeated First Bank FC of Lagos 2-0 to emerge champions. NLO, if NLO is working, NNL will work. Then NPFL will work. Because, don't, let, don't be deceived, most of these guys go straight to an NPFL club. The two clubs are going to be very uh, uh, good ambassadors of the NLO club, play, playing their, their trade in the NLL uh, championship. Uh, for us in the NLO, we'll continue to support them. A total of 25 teams across the country took part in the media edition of the NLO Afri Scout Cup. With sports updates, Peter Oibo, NT News. And that's it on Panorama today from NTA Network Center, Makodi. Thank you for staying with us and have a pleasant day.